get started. Welcome everyone to the V3 implementation call. Today is January 26th. We are happy to have you with us. We've got a pretty full agenda, so we will jump right in. I do want to exclude um, or excuse Eric and Clay from the call first thing this morning. They had a conflict that they needed to take care of and will join us as soon as they're able. Let's put up the agenda. There are a couple of changes on the agenda. I moved a couple of things around and then we did add one topic here for the version 3.4 CDA. And Josh is gonna talk to us a little bit about that in a few minutes. Laurel, let's go ahead and get started with maintenance update. All right, um, so we had our maintenance window last week on the um, 18th and the 19th, Tuesday and Wednesday as scheduled. Um, there was some maintenance done to the submissions web service. So you may have noticed a downtime with that web service. Um, it should be back up and running by now. Um, if anyone's experiencing difficulty submitting, uh, please let us know. We are we were made aware late last week that there was some processing delay on submissions. Uh, files were taking a little longer than usual to move from zeros to ones. We have um, addressed that delay as well, and you should now um, be experiencing this week your normal submission experience of uh, files quickly moving from a zero to a one. If you are experiencing any issues with submissions, again, please let us know so that we can work to troubleshoot those or uh, correct any problems um, that are there. And that's the maintenance update. Uh, if it's okay with you, Julianne, I'll just go straight into the next topic. Yes, please uh, do. That'd be great. Perfect. So we also wanted to touch on the issue of translations between Nemesis versions and how that um, would affect compliance testing attempts. I've had, uh, uh, Josh is going to provide a little bit more detail, but I've had several people reach out to me specifically about whether or not they're allowed to use, utilize the um, Nemesis provided translations as a method to create uh, three, four files from three, five files. And the answer is yes, you're certainly allowed to do that, um, but it might not get you through compliance testing. Um, part, of, part of the purpose of compliance testing is to ensure that you've implemented every aspect of that version of the standard. And the translation is probably not definitely not going to be enough to get you all the way there because there are some values in a 3.4 file that you can't reach via translation from a 3.5 file. Um, I have some vendors who've attempted this and have sort of discovered that information. So if you're considering using a translation approach to um, recertify on 3.4, please be aware that um, you will have to do some additional work to get through the test cases because they do require that you uh, prove that you can use just about every value and element in the standard, whether or not it would be accessible via the translation or not. And I'm just going to hand it over to Josh and he can maybe provide some more detail about um, the translation since he is the author of those. Yeah, one example of where you'd run into issues with translating from 3.5 to 3.4 and then trying to pass compliance testing is in the ERS section. There's a couple of data elements uh, that are in 3.4 that were retired in 3.5, uh, having to do with CPR and AED use prior to EMS arrival. You'd have to find a way to generate data for those elements. Um, so it, it may be possible with some really careful implementation uh, that you maybe uh, implement the, the stuff that was retired from 3.4 to 3.5 as custom elements and custom values in, in a 3.5 file. And then you, you parse the custom data uh, as part of your translation process, which would uh, be something you would build on top of the Nemesis provided translation resources. Um, <clears throat> so it would be, it would be a, a bit of work to do that. Um, it's just good to be aware that, uh, you know, and, and keep that in mind that, uh, the reason we have versions is because they're not uh, exactly one-to-one -one matches with each other and translations provide an approximation to get from one version to the other, but uh, they by necessity have limitations uh, and those would need to be considered if you're going through compliance testing. Thanks, Josh. Um, if anyone has any questions about this, uh, please feel free to send us an email or you can drop something in the chat or if you're 
Real brave, Josh. you can speak up now. Laurel, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Mark. Um, I was just wondering, is there any way for the recipient of the data to know that it was translated? Is there anything identifying in it to know that a vendor is actually utilizing 3.5 but sending 3.4 data? Or is it will it appear to us as if it's just coming from a 3.4 site? There's a couple of hints. Uh, one is um, if they're using the standard Nemesis translation that Nemesis provides, there is an XML comment at the top of the file that's added in that says this file was generated as a translation using the Nemesis standard translation. Now, a vendor could, they could remove that comment from the translation XSLT if they wanted to, to get rid of it. Uh, and then another hint I think would be if you're looking at their software version info in E, what is that, E record of four, whatever that is, um, and they're using a newer version of their software than, than what they were certified on for their 3-4 certification. That might be a, a clue as well. But if, if we don't actually look at the file and it's just going through the normal uh, web services, we may never know. Yeah, that's right. Just like you never know uh, what database they use to store their data in their system and they translate it from you know, that data format to an MSIS XML file. You really don't know what the vendor has done to process their data before spitting it out to you. Well, I mean, that comes back to the same thing. We don't know. We know who collected and authored the record, but we don't know who submitted the record in terms of vendors. We don't know that either. So I was just curious uh, um, if there was any way for us to even know that this is taking place. So we would physically have to look at the file and kind of be a little bit of a investigator to figure that out yeah all right thanks josh thank you guys all right if there are no other questions let me go ahead and pass it off to the next person thanks everyone Thanks, Laurel and Josh. Lori has our next topic. Lori? Yeah, I just wanted to make an announcement that um, a project we've been working on for several months has finally come to completion. And you should have received an email if you're on our Google group list, an email last week explaining this, but I wanted to mention it today as well. We have partnered with Prodigy and they are an EMS um, education agency nationwide. And they are providing um, free to access for any of you or for any um, agencies, clinicians around the country can access it for free. Um, and it's an educational training video, essentially talking about good documentation is the focus. And they give a little bit of history of Nemesis and how data started being collected and what it's used for today. Um, there's several different voices that speak into it. Ryan Stark from a legal perspective shares the importance of good documentation. Um, we talk about what the data is used for, um, for researchers, as well as for changes in funding and um, changes to patient care and things nationwide. We are really optimistic and hopeful that as this, as this video and training is shared, that it will lead to an improvement in documentation. We believe that as um, clinicians and agencies understand why it is they have to fill out these forms carefully and what it's used for, that we'll see an improvement in records and a decrease in, in warnings and failures of records that were not completed correctly or completely. So we're asking for your help essentially to share this. And I think Chris is gonna put a link to the videos in the chat. You do need to create an account with Prodigy, but that is free to do. And um, there's three small videos. They total about 60 minutes um, for the three of them. So I would encourage you to watch it if you have time. It's, it's very interesting and informative. And then I would also encourage state data managers, if you wouldn't mind sharing it with agencies in your state, um, or with directors in your state to share with agencies. We wanna get the word out um, that this is available, free CEUs, and um, we're excited about the impact that it could have. Any questions on that? Um, yes, I think that question was about CE credit. 
And I, and yes, maybe I'm using the wrong terminology, but it is for EMS clinicians to renew their certification is what the credit's for. Okay, great. I'll pass it back to Julianne. Let us know if you have questions and uh, we encourage you to watch those videos and share them widely. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Um, and we'd also love to have your feedback um, and we appreciate um, you being candid. So if there's, if there's a way that we can add to those or improve them, please feel free to let us know. It's um, kind of a new venture for us. So we'd love to hear what, what um, you think after you've seen those. All right, I'm gonna turn some time over to uh, Cherie Murphy and Dr. Michael Redliner. Uh, they're gonna go over some NEMSQA updates with us. Michael and Cherie, it's all yours. Great, thank you so much, Julianne. Appreciate the time to talk to everyone here. Um, Cherie Murphy, who's uh, I think in the background, but uh, is the, the brain, brains behind this effort. Um, I'm going to share my screen and kind of take us through some updates related to uh, related to the NEMSQA measure updates. Um, and uh, Shri is going to uh, make sure that I get it all right. And um, I'd just like to thank ahead of time Dr. Jeff Jarvis and uh, Kelly Burleson, who is our measures development specialist, who's been working with the team at NEMSIS to make sure that all things are coordinated from a data perspective. So um, I'm going to share my screen. I'm, I'm sure that I'm going to get it wrong at first, and uh, then we'll we'll see what happens. So, all right, are you seeing the correct? Okay, great. Yep, we see your presentation, not the notes, just your presentation. Excellent, excellent. So, um, so as you all know, this is the. Um, these are the, the NEMSCO measures from 2021 and before, um, prior to the, the update related to, uh, related to the change in NEMSIS and other measure development to kind of standard updates that, that we do on an annual basis. Um, they, uh, you know, they represent a broad uh, array of evidence-based practice in EMS, um, including lights, of, lights and sirens and all of these measures that you see here. These are um, what was originally the um, the um, the measures from EMS Compass that that have been you know kind of continually upgraded uh, and uh, and uh, put into a kind of a national uh, quality forum format uh, and with help from Nemsis has been really fitting into the Nemsis data fr framework. So these are the the updates and so there's some of, of these global updates that we've done. Um, we're going to talk, uh, we, we've added some initial populations, um, and as you can see from the denominator statement here, um, not only, you know, that we, we've kind of expanded this population group, um, we've also, uh, one of the major updates that's, uh, that's coming, and I'll, I'll show you some more specifics, is really around stratification of populations by age. So asthma 01, pediatrics 03, stroke 02 is the only one without stratification there. So, um, but, but as you see here on the right-hand side, there, right, there's three populations as opposed to one prior. Um, and so um, some of these have been, strat you know, some of the measures that were not stratified before are now stratified. And as you'll see, we've renamed some of the measures uh, rename some of the measures uh, from a pediatrics name and title to make them also stratified by age, right? So previously, um, there was only three measures that had a pediatric specific population. And now we're moving to um, 10 of the 11 measures uh, that are stratified by age. So therefore you can, um, we can parse out pediatrics versus adults. And we have a, a big celebration by all the, the peanuts gallery. Um, all right, so these are the, and because of that stratification of most measures, um, we've renamed some of the, the measures, which are, you know, pediatric 01, which is the pediatric respiratory assessment is now respiratory 01, uh, and it's stratified by age. And the same for pediatrics 02, which is the administration of beta agonist for pediatric asthma. Uh, now we're including adults and kids in this, so we've changed it to asthma 01. Um, and pediatrics 03 uh, is um, 
the documentation of estimated weight in kilograms. We're, we'll talk. A, I'm going to briefly talk about this, um, but um, I will direct you to our our um, webinar, uh, which will there will be a link at the end of this presentation where you can get all of the dirty details about um, how this is specifically calculated and why it's different from before. So, um, so we've added some uh, population codes. All right, so. Um, it's an expansion of the type of service request in eResponse 05. Um, oops, excuse me. Sorry, wrong. Uh, so hypoglycemia 01. So E situation 11, E situation in 12, the primary, the, the provider's primary and secondary impression um, is expanded to include ICD-10 code E13.64. Um, so it's broadening that specifically. Uh, and then for respiratory 01, um, you see here on the screen how that's been expanded as well. And um, Josh Schlegler or, or Shri, if, you, if there's anything that I'm misstating, please correct me. Um, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory as written here. Um, so uh, again, so I'm gonna say that um, the, this, this pediatric 03B, which is the documentation of estimated weight in kilograms, the, the way that we're describing who's included in the denominator and how they're, uh, if it's an exclusion versus an exception, I'm going to defer this conversation um, for the webinar if you're interested in how that looks. But essentially what we're doing is giving credit for, for all pediatrics who receive a medication um, and, uh, and uh, even if it's, if, if it's weight-based or not weight-based. And then, um, it, you know, I think it, it, you know, ensures that folks get uh, as many uh, pediatric medication administrations credited for uh, in the way that this is calculated. Some of the work that we've done also is related to the NEMSIS uh, 3.5 standards update. And so um, what was previously 911 response, um, you know, this eResponse 05, the type of service, right? It's included and broadened uh, both, you know, to the emergency response, the intercept and the mutual aid as well. Um, for the e-disposition 12, so we re redefined the EMS transport definition, right? I guess, I guess not redefined, but uh, expanded that. And so it's just including some more disposition codes. Um, and that, as you see here, this it's uh, included in the definition in the pseudocode um, in, on, on our website as well. There are some specifics around improving the measure. So for hypoglycemia, including the population, the, those who have um, a blood glucose level, we added you know, a low option um, and uh, included that as well in the eVitals 18 section. So as I said earlier, there's um, the uh, we have we did a webinar on December 9th. The, that recording is available on our website, uh, and as well as the updated measures. And uh, if there's any questions or or comments or anything that you would like to, you know, kind of reach out to us about, our contact information is there. I, I'm sure that there'll be something shared at the end of this presentation. Um, if not, we'll put it uh, we'll put it in the chat as well. Um, so this is the updated measure set as it looks on the on the NEMSCO website. And uh, those are full, you can have access to all of the information, both the technical, uh, all of the technical details should be there for those of you who implement these within, uh, within a state or within um, uh, a vendor, uh, but, uh, or within a, a large system. So uh, please feel free to look at these. And again, if there's any questions, we can help you uh, kind of get to the answers that you need. And I just um, put those. I just put those links um, in the chat as well, um, and uh, we can share the presentation as well afterwards. And, and great, thank you, Sheree. I appreciate it. And so, just this is a, also a description. Not only is the are the technical measures there, but the updates are specifically there on the website. So um, feel free if you just want looking for the specific changes that should be in the log there as well. 
Um, the, some of the projects, just, just for awareness, uh, some of the projects that we're working on are um, uh, working in conjunction with the American College of Surgeons uh, Committee on Trauma uh, to look at the, the, the measures associated with the new updated trauma triage guide, guidelines that uh, they've been working on for some time. Uh, but there's a component of measurement that goes along with, with that. And uh, it, we, we're, uh, you know, we, we're in the process of helping them to put together those, the, the specific measures, how they align with, um, how they align with NEMSYS. And uh, honestly, it'll probably be a, a great tool for agencies and, and folks to use to understand how they're doing uh, with trauma and getting patients to trauma, trauma centers. Um, and, it, and it aligns perfectly with the national standard, um, you know, in the CDC guidance around the, the trauma triage. Um, we are um, looking to catalog existing EMS measures. We're reviewing existing EMS measures. Um, we're exploring opportunities to harmonize with folks like the AHA. Um, and we're looking for gap, you know, looking at the gaps that exist opportunities for evidence-based measures that, that make sense for patients' clinical care. Um, and the, other, the last thing I would just add is that you know, we've been involved with the project with the state of Florida. Um, I don't know if I saw anybody specifically from Florida here, I, maybe some of the data folks, but, um, but the, we've been working hard on the FAIR project, which is a, a broad set of measure, EMS measures that, um, that they have been championing and we've been working with them on. Um, and, and our hope is to take some of those measures and make them national measures accessible to all, um, uh, but that's in the future. So thank you all. I appreciate the time. Happy to answer any questions. Michael, this is Brenda from Florida. Just wanted to follow up on that. Um, participating in the FAIR project has really highlighted data quality issues. So it's been, uh, it's been great that we've highlighted some of those and it substantiates and further uh, supports our need for standardization, particularly using defined lists and things like that. So that's been a great benefit with this. Great. No, thanks, Brenda. And, uh, you know, we, we all talk about data quality and I know Josh Legler and, and the NEMSQA team has also talked about maybe thinking about standards around data quality and that type of thing. That's, uh, again, a future thought and endeavor. Can I ask what FAIR stands for? Um, sure. Um, so it's floor the, oh man. <laughs> Sorry to put you on this spot. <laughs> Shree, help it's me out the, here. It's feasible, <laughs> achievable. Yeah. Uh, aim. Impactful and relevant. Thank you. Thank you, Ty. You are. That was a yeah, okay. question that was not in the front of my brain. <laughs> That's impressive. Good job, Ty. And all I had was feasible. I had the F. The rest of them were gone. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, this is Josh Legler. Um, just wanted to mention, uh, hopefully all of you are aware that uh, the Nemesis TAC provides a performance measure uh, service uh, through a web service. And also there's a dashboard, a Tableau report that you can access on the NEMSIS website that uh, gives you national benchmarking for the NEMSQA measures that can be measured out of the national database. So they use national elements only. Uh, there's about a dozen of those. Um, the NEMSIS TAC is in the process of uh, updating um, their implementation of those measures right now. So probably in the next uh, month or two, uh, those updates uh, will be implemented in that national uh, performance measure web service. And so what'll happen at that time is that um, the changes that, that Michael went over will be uh, taken into account and historical data will be reprocessed with those new definitions. And so uh, the historical numbers that you get out of the uh, NEMSIS performance measures web service will be restated. They'll, they'll change uh, when that uh, update goes out. Thanks so much for the opportunity to talk with you all. And uh, um, we look forward to continuing our, our partnership with NEMSIS on, on making sure that this all works together. 
Thank you. Thank you both for your presentation. Um, and as always, feel free to reach out with questions directly to Sheree or Michael, or if you reach out to Nemesis, we'll make sure and um, send you to the right to the right email addresses and contacts. All right, Lori, we've got Lori up again. Um, I should we should have just put you together so that you weren't popping in and out, but we're we're happy to have the next topic. Um, Lori's just going to do um, just visit with us a little bit about the 2021 um, da research data set inclusion. Yes, thanks, Julianne. I actually have two quick announcements. Uh, first is that we are less than a month away from the closure of the 2021 data set. So February 18th is what we have set for that deadline. And I know I've been working uh, closely with several of you who are working to catch up and submit records from last year. We'd love to have that public release data set as complete as possible when we close it. And so um, thank you for your help with that. Feel free to reach out if you have questions or you don't think you're going to meet uh, meet that timeline for any reason. We'd love to help and do what we can in that process. And then the second announcement is that yesterday, state data managers should have received an email from me with a link to a survey. And I see as of this morning, 14 of you have already completed it. So thank you for that. And we're asking by next Friday, if you can take a moment, I think Chris just shared it in the chat as well. So you can even multitask during this meeting and fill it out if you'd like to. But there's just four quick questions. And essentially we want to know an updated timeline of when your state plans to transition to 3.5. Um, we will post this on your state page to let people in your in your state know your plans. And we also will share it with vendors so that vendors know state plans and states can um, work accordingly with your vendors. So if you um, have a moment and could fill that out today or sometime by next Friday at the latest would be great. And I think that's all I needed to say. Thanks, Julianne. Any questions on those things? Okay, reach out if we can help. Thank you, Lori. Um, we also had a question come up last week on if we were closing the um, call for research for inclusion in the research data set earlier this year. I know long in the past we did it, um, NEMSIS did it further into the summer, um, but the last few years um, with how fast data is being submitted to the TAC from the states, last year and the year before we closed the uh, call for research data um, end of February as well. So we're we're sticking with kind of that time frame, um, and it seems to work for most states. Um, we have a couple that that um, allow for longer submission times, and so we're just working with states, some a few states individually, to make sure that we can have um, we can help them submit as much data for inclusion in the research data set. Um, but as always, we'll any data submitted will be included in the national EMS repository. All right, it looks like there was a question in chat, but it looks like, um, all right, we, well, we've got two questions. So David had asked about um, why not keeping the historical measures on the NEMSQA, um, and Josh responded to him, we can continue that conversation or take that offline. Um, and then Lance um, put in a question from South Dakota that it, it would be nice to know when all the vendors will be ready to go with their 3.5 product. We, we have, um, we keep on the website, and Lori, maybe you can throw that, um, or maybe even Jen, throw that into the chat, uh, the location where we show vendors that are um, in the compliance process for a 3.5 product or have completed uh, the compliance pro process for a 3.5 product. We do have a list of the vendors that responded to a survey that we did before of when their target dates were, and we can put that in the chat as well. So it's um, we're, we're doing the same thing with the states as we've done with the vendors. We wanna be able to communicate plans for both stakeholders to the other stakeholder. So as much as states and vendors are willing to share with us, we are happy to pass that information along as well. Oh, thank you, hey, Laurel. Hey, hey. It's Mark Robert. Hi, Mark. Um, hi. I, I wanted to point out um, a, a big factor here that everybody needs to take into consideration. So 
a state may be ready to accept 3.5. A vendor may be ready or have got compliance on 3.5, but the transition from 3.4 to 3.5 for the agencies themselves is a pretty big lift. In fact, it's a huge lift. I'm working on it now, and um, it, it's a lot of work. So, you know, just to say that somebody's going to be ready in, in June and everybody's already in June, it, it may not be until the following February before the agency is actually ready to go train, implement, and all those things. And so I think that needs to be also something that's talked about, too, is just understanding the amount of effort that it's going to take for you know, not only the state, but each one of these agencies to, to move over. So I, I only bring that up because it's, it's, it's in something that I'm working on right now, and it's a lot of work. Thank you for bringing it up. And it is, it's, the, it's the final piece to that puzzle. So you're absolutely right. Um, you know, we can, we can communicate when states are ready, when vendors are ready, but until that's been implemented at the agency level, um, that data is not going to flow in three five. So thank you. Well, for if you've that. got a yeah, if you've got a if you've got a uh, an agency that's got two or three hundred employees or maybe more, um, you know, just the training alone is is something. And then the the other thing that uh, I know we have a lot of image train customers on the phone. And the other thing is is that if they're doing transfers from one agency to another agency. All the agencies have to be on the same version. You can't have mixed versions. So there's just a lot of a lot of things to coordinate. And um, so anyway, I hope everybody has a good week. What's left of it? <laughs> Thank you, Mark, and thanks for bringing that up. Um, I I don't think we spend enough time talking about um, the agency level. So I do appreciate you bringing that up. Um, Benny asks in chat if there's a training package for the agency's end users. Nemesis has provided some training materials, um, some informational materials on 3.5 um, that can be used at an agency level. There's a lot of that specific training that, or that 3.5 training that's specific to the vendor in use. So we're happy to share um, anything that Nemesis has, has developed for assisting that 3.5 transition in a, you know, in a very global, here's the reasoning behind those changes, here's what it impacts, but that user interface at the agency level um, is, is so specific to the vendor that they use. If there are other, if there are other vendors that want to um, um, speak up or talk about um, how they're um, training their agencies, we'd love to have you pitch in or whatever you'd like to contribute to that conversation. Lori or Laurel, would, would somebody put in the chat um, where those three five resources are located? Awesome, thank you. All right, next on our agenda, this was an added item. Um, we've got, we've asked Josh Legler to speak on the version 3.4 CDA data needed for HL7 testing. Um, so that was a last minute agenda. We appreciate Josh being able to, um, and being willing to jump in and um, talk about this. Thanks, Julianne. I'm a, a kind of a fill in, I think for uh, Jay Lyle who uh, contracts with the NEMSIS Technical Assistance Center to develop the HL7 resources related to NEMSIS. Um, so back in 2016, uh, this implementation guide that you see here was uh, published through HL7. It was the implementation guide for HL7 version three clinical document architecture, uh, the emergency medical services patient care report. And uh, that guide was uh, based on NEMSIS version 3.4. Uh, so that's been out um, in, in release uh, status uh, for what, seven or six years now. Um, the updated guide is being worked on. So here it is, the, the same guide, but uh, the January 2022 uh, release. And this, the one you're seeing here was the 
the draft of the guide that was submitted for balloting in HL7 in the January round of balloting. So this is not in uh, final status yet, uh, but uh, the difference here in the 2022 guide is that it uh, is based on Nemesis version 3.5. So for example, uh, uh, information about the disposition of the call looks a little different in uh, this version of the HL7 EMS patient care report than it did in the 2016 version. <clears throat> um, so that went through a uh, ballot in January. Um, there were about a dozen uh, substantive uh, changes uh, found, uh, some little um, uh, corrections that need to be made here and there, like uh, an element that, that referenced the wrong data type or a cardinality constraint that was incorrect, some stuff like that. So those are gonna be fixed and then this will be reballoted uh, in the May ballot cycle for HL7. Um, we would encourage any of you who have HL7 membership to participate in that ballot uh, that will come up in May. You'll need to sign up for the ballot about a month uh, in advance. I think so sometime early April. Um, anyway, uh, we, we would love for this, uh, for this version of the guide to get some, some testing on it. And in order to do that, we've got to find or create some test records in this new version of the HL7 patient care report. And uh, one idea that has come up for that is to um, get some records that are in the old version, this the 2016 uh, HL7 PCR, uh, get some records uh, in that version and then do some uh, adjustments to them to uh, make them comply with this uh, new version that's going through balloting, uh, run them through validation and, and see how everything works. Uh, so we wanted to put out a call uh, uh, now if uh, any of you vendors have implemented that 2016 patient care report to send uh, a, an EMS PCR through an HL7 uh, version three CDA format. And if you have some records lying around that you could uh, de-identify and um, share with an MSYS TAC or that you could retain within your own a network, but run through some validation uh, and, and help the NEMSYS TAC with some validation processes. Um, that would be greatly appreciated. So if any of you vendors are uh, in that boat, have some data that uh, you think would be useful for uh, testing out this new version uh, of the CDA, um, I would recommend that you go ahead and email uh, Clay Mann and uh, he'll get you connected up and uh, we'd love to have some help with that. Any questions on that? Okay, great. Well, we hope that someone will be able to help us out here. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. All right, let's put that agenda back up. And participants, okay. So if we're able to turn a little bit of time over to Clay, um, he just wanted to share for a few minutes on moving forward with the IHE USA's Path to Production uh, digital series. Clay, did you want to share your screen? Yeah, may I, uh, Julianne? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Great to be with you. Just um, I left a a little bit of a retirement get together for Dr. John Kramer in the office of EMS at NHTSA. So he has been a strong advocate of NIMSIS. He will be missed. Um, I just briefly wanted to uh, remind folks of the fact that we had an opportunity to have uh, some uh, IHE represent, um, representatives uh, provide for us an a, a slideshow that talked about a process that they're putting in place this year, the Path to Production Digital Series. It's really, it's really a process, if you might remember, where um, you, you pay a nominal fee to IHE. They work hard to bring the necessary people into a room and, or, and, and through a process that can be a year process or a two-year process, even in, at times kind of work work a product 
completely through the interoperability stages to and, and into a connectathon for testing. Um, we reached out to IHE, bringing to them the work that we've done so far in regards to moving what, for lack of a better term, would be the E outcomes data from uh, an EHR back into the EMS record so that uh, EMS agencies would have patient outcome data associated with their with their record. Vendors have done some great work with this in the past, and there are lots of, of places where this is working. There are still lots of places where it's not working or not available. Uh, so, uh, so we approached IHE about the possibility of taking the work that we've been doing with the e-outcomes group that's been led by Josh Legler. We've recently been reviewing some use cases um, of sharing that e outcomes data or getting the patient data back to EMS and taking that effort that we have been working on and moving it into the path to production digital series with the idea that through this opportunity, we'll be able to bring in the other important players that would be incredibly valuable in this, in this process of ensuring that it's truly um, uh, interoperable, right? So they, they can bring the EHRs to the table where that's been difficult for us to do, bringing all the players together. So we're we're currently working with IHE to develop the 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 process for this and and the cost to have it uh, uh, done. Uh, Eric has indicated to the Office of EMS that the Nemesis Tech will fund this work. So if there are people that are interested in participating in this, we're hopeful that this uh, process will. We'll come out with several different products that will allow data to be exchanged with EHRs, right? So there'll be a fire mechanism, hopefully, and and some and some more legacy mechanisms, right? Because um, uh, there'll be a multi-year kind of movement to fire. So we'll we'll be developing, I think, several products that will allow for uh, kind of a, a generic. Uh, product available for the exchange of that data. So if you're interested in participating in that. If you would just indicate that in the chat, then we'll take record of that. Uh, anybody who's associated with the e-outcomes group right now, uh, uh, the working group with the NEMSYS Tech, you'll automatically move, uh, be moved into this process. So if there's others that wanna participate in this, would love to have some state representatives. For example, as you can see, we, we work the entire process, that uh, the entire problem from beginning to end. And it may very well be that Many states are interested in having that outcome data come from an HIE rather from an EHR, right? So all those different perspectives need to be in the room. So if you're interested, please let us know and, and we'll tie you into this into this effort that um, we'll be getting away next month. So thanks for, uh, any questions in regards to that effort? All right, thanks, Julianne. Sure. Do we have do we have Eric with us? All right. He was well, also, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was also in that meeting with John. Yeah. Okay. Well, if he jumps on before we're through, um, we'll turn some time over to him. Um, are there any topics, issues, questions, comments? that anyone would like to bring forward while we have this group together? All right. We do have a training coming up next week. I believe February is next week. That's scary that it came so fast. Um, agency location dashboard. This is a new dashboard um, that requires um, state level access to the data. Laurel Bader is going to just give a run through on using that dashboard and how it can be helpful to, to a state. That will be next Tuesday. Our upcoming meetings are uh, February. Uh, we try to always meet on the second and fourth Wednesday of the month. I understand that there were some people again this month that did not receive the Google, the Google group 
invitation. We um, we also had that complaint last month, so we're we'll keep looking into why that's that may not be going through to everybody, um, and and see if we can help to resolve that. So we've got um, the two meetings that are coming up in February. We will be closed February 21st. That will be our TAP closure. Um, and then I, I wonder if you guys would be willing to use your, use your um, um, annotation or put in the chat um, for those who um, are looking at um, attending or being able to travel for a face-to-face -face meeting for the NEMSIS annual meeting that we're looking at in August um, to do that in a face-to-face -face environment with um, a virtual option is um, what we're what we're talking about for that. So if you if you have specific direction from your states or from your leadership, um, John Becker's asking when in August. Monet, would you put that? We haven't we haven't finalized the date yet. We are just looking at um, a specific weekend. So the date that Monet puts up will be is not set in stone. So Monet's put it up there, August 21st to the 23rd is what we're looking at. We will be sending out a save the date and some additional um, information, um, but we would like to, just as you think about it, um, we would like to take the temperature of, of whether states are being allowed to travel in the fall, and it may be too far out to project where we are hoping for a face-to-face -face meeting. Monet, is there anything else you wanted to ask or talk about for annual meeting? Yeah, thank you so much. <clears throat> I would like to start a contract for the um, hotel for the Deer Valley um, Resort. And I need approximately 50 people. I see that we have 84 people on the call. So if there are folks from the Bay Area, I'm thinking about Mr. Davis Saylor, and so many folks who uh, visited with us in person in past years. If you think that um, you might be able to come out, um, if I could get sort of a like preliminary count, I'll feel uh, confident about starting the contract. So I'm hoping to see if folks could just indicate in the chat that at least you're interested. And then that helps give me a little bit more confidence about uh, starting some contracts. So thank you so much. All right, we've got some got some good responses in chat. Thanks. We'll have more information about that and a save the date flyer um, coming soon to you. We'd like you to be able to plan out it as far ahead as you can. And we know for some um, departments, states, and vendors, your travel plans are made really far in advance. So we wanna be as respectful to the at as possible. All right, are there any other questions, comments, issues to bring forward before we close out the meeting? Hey, this is Brenda. I just wanted to take this quick minute to introduce a new Florida team member. Ed Mills joined our team today as a business analyst. And you know, we've had a void there for a while. So we're thrilled and excited to have him on board. And he will be, you know, as we get him onboarded, he will be um, participating more and more at the national level. Excellent. Welcome, Ed. We are happy to have you. Um, and the group that's on this call today, they are terrific resources for questions and um, and we're happy to connect you with anyone else to, to answer questions or to help that transition. Um, learning, learning Nemesis and EMS data can be can be a little overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Thanks, Brenda. Well, and thanks for the introduction and 
thank you for uh, offering up the assistance too. We're happy to have you, Ed. All right, I think I think we're okay to go ahead and close the meeting. Thank you guys for being willing to participate and um, taking time out of your busy schedules to be with us this morning. We will see you back in a few weeks for the February V3 inf implementation call. Have a good rest of your day and be safe. Thanks everyone. Thank you.